for those of us that don't know, um, what is data hygiene? Yeah, for sure. So I think there's lots of different definitions, but the way that we would look at data hygiene is more around the contact data side of it. And it's all just making sure that the data that you have is up to date and accurate. And also that you have the most um, data points on an individual that's possible out there so that you can create a really good picture of what the what uh, the the ICP, I guess your your ideal customer persona looks like from reports based on the data that you have within your CRM. Now that we know what data hygiene is, can you tell us what are the best practices um, for data hygiene? Yeah, so I think there's several. Um, the main thing comes around making sure that all of the data that you have and all of the activity that you complete on uh, on an individual, whether it's through the sales cycle or through the um, through the, the marketing uh, outreach is actually logged in your CRM. And therefore that you can look back on it over a few uh, months when you wanted to do your forecasting for the next period and say, it took this level of activity from this individual to make a persona that fits this um, part of our ICP, uh, make that the success that comes from it. So then when you've got that, really clear picture of what you've had to do for what type of group then you can repeat it and make it a predictable um, revenue model moving forward one of the one of the things that we would suggest to do is to make sure that the data before you action it is up to date so if you have data within your crm we know that data decays over a certain period of time so i think it's about one third of your data will decay over the period of a year just based on job movements promotions mm. um, and companies going through certain changes um, so if you need to essentially identify what type of data you're going to be utilizing for a given period we'd say either monthly or quarterly um, and then make sure that all of that data is completely uh, refreshed and clean before you go on to action it. And that will just make sure that your bounce rates stay low, that um, the sales reps are actually speaking to people that they know that are in the company. If you were to do this at the beginning of the year or the beginning of half a year and update all of the data, by the time you actually get round to actioning it, the data is gonna have started to, to become less accurate again. Right. So those would be the two main things. It's essentially knowing the data that you're about to action and um, making sure that every everything that you do to action the data is actually being logged so you can replicate and predict uh, the future. In terms of Salesforce, um, can you share your number one tip um, for managing data quickly? Yes, yeah, so um, I would say making it as easy as possible for the end users to actually update what they can. It, the more, data points that you make, um, required points, the less likely somebody's gonna go in and make one little edit. If they know that they need to just say, oh, this person's changed companies and now all, all the company stuff needs to be edited. So this, this, and this. In reality, the likelihood of that happening is quite minimal. So you should see your users as the, the first step in the door of data maintenance, I guess and make it as simple as possible for them to do that job for you because they're the ones that are out there seeing what's happening on LinkedIn, seeing people who are moving roles and making sure that they can then change that knowledge into actionable um, insights, I guess, into your own CRM. Tell us about Cognizant and how the tool, this tool that y'all cre created has kept Salesforce data clean. Yeah, so it's too, the, the database that we have has been created from uh, over 125 different sources. They're open web sources, as well as private data providers that we've partnered with like Crunchbase and S&P Global. So that's the data where it came from initially. And then we have an AI engine that sits behind uh, the data asset that basically scans all of the sources and makes sure that the data is as accurate as possible so that we know that we're providing the data. I think the, the longest any data, the oldest any data can be in our engine is 90 days old. So we know at the point of sale that people are only putting in data that's either up to date or up to three months old. Um, we then built an app where people within Salesforce can first of all search for new data 
if they wanted to plug it into their marketing campaigns or plug it into um, their sales cadences or any sort of way that they go about actioning data, they can essentially go into their own sales force and say, I want to find the heads of sales in certain companies in certain industries in specific locations. We can filter down by really quite um, refined uh, filters, including like the technologies that companies actually use. Um, and also because the data is up to date and it's all live, we can pick up on actual real events that are happening. So when companies have received funding, uh, if they're hiring or if um, somebody's just joined the role, mm. you can pick up on those triggers and they help to uh, people identify when is kind of the best time to reach out to a certain company. For example, during the pandemic, a lot of our clients used the hiring data because when they found out if they were selling a finance tool, for example, and they found out that the finance team was hiring, then they can kind of understand that that finance team is growing despite the pandemic. And therefore, it can be a good opportunity for you to reach out to them.